So today is the day that Terra Nil comes out, a game that I've been really, really looking forward to for a long time. It just has an amazing vibe to it. It just... Mm. You'll see where we're going to get into it. But it's basically... They, they touted it as a sort of a reverse city builder nature restoration game. And mm, I just love that. Also, it's a game by... It's a, a game by Free Lives, which is actually a South African studio, so hell yeah. And actually, after looking at the art book for the game, I realized, hey, I actually may have met a couple of these people. Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, another awesome thing is uh, they said that they're going to be giving a portion of the profits on Steam to the Endangered Wildlife Trust. And I think that is just cherry on top that makes this kind of worth going for. So... If you think this looks cool, check it out. I'm not sponsored at all. I'm just I'm just into this. Yeah, so let's get into it. Let's create a new profile. And um, let's just check the options. UI scale looks good. You can set custom difficulty things as well, which is cool. I definitely don't want to mess with the audio yet because I think the soundtrack is quite awesome. So, Terra Nil. Beginner's Guide to Ecosystem Restoration. This book serves as a guide to the intricate process of restoring an environment from a wasteland to a thriving ecosystem. The process is not always easy, and even with this guide, you will need to experiment to understand exactly what needs to be done. In the pages that follow, you will find descriptions of the regions, flora and fauna you are likely to encounter. The book also contains blueprints of machines and structures that will help you in your task. If you are successful, you will eventually no longer need this book. When this happens, I ask that you pass it along, that it may serve someone else. Good luck with your journey of restoration. Select your approach. There are a variety of approaches to wasteland reclamation. What's yours? Gardener, I want to create beautiful, vibrant landscapes. Recommended for players seeking a more relaxing experience. Um, ecologist, I want to restore biodiversity and balance to the environment. Recommended for players with strategy game experience. Environmental engineer, I want to rebuild the ecosystem with sophisticated machines. Not recommended for a first playthrough. Mm. Though I am tempted. I am tempted. Um, let me know if you want me to see me do that. I think since they're saying that, I'll, I'll just go for the middle. Ecologist. Okay, so it doesn't immediately start, but it shows you what happens. We get different starting resources, um, building costs, tutorials enabled, Zen mode disabled, contextual hints disabled. So, environmental engineer increases the cost of buildings and turns off um, building unlocked objectives. And yeah, we'll see. Um, Ecologist mode, let's go. I love the art style of the way. Any wasteland reclamation project should start with a turbine. Select and place one now. And they have to go on the rocks. Whoosh. Cleaning the soil. Now that you have electricity, you can clean the soil. Try to fit four toxin scrubbers as far from the turbine as possible. And this is where we start getting um, the, the slight little bit of puzzle thing that we're going to have going over here. You want to maximize um, efficiency in a way. So there we go. Toxin scrubbers suck out all the nasty muck and give us fertile soil that we can then do stuff with. So now you can see we get a bunch of different options on how to place this. And as we Go through here, you see we get a different green number over there, and that is the the resource that we go with, the leaves, the greenery. So it's telling us to put one like that, put one like that, and like that. 
Look at all that grass. If you're lost, you can always look in the handbook for hints about what to do next. Oops, I didn't mean to place that. Increasing the landscape's greenery is your primary goal, but remember to keep an eye on your available resources. To begin with, get the greenery target to 30%. Should be easy enough. We can just plonk another tower up there and find a nice little spot. Or three. Aha. And now we see the world that we've got to work with and we've unlocked a bunch of new things. We've got to uh, reclaim 180 more greenery to unlock the next thingy and will progress up the tiers of things. You'll see we've got a, a very dead world over here. We've got some uh, old river basins and things over there which uh, give us some future interesting things to look at. So we're just going to continue with what we were doing. Oh yeah, we do have an undo. I could have actually undone that uh, accidental one earlier. Wing! And there we go, we've unlocked the next thing, which is the water pump. Pumps water to fill dry riverbeds. Riverbanks are cleansed by the water. Range is extended by elevation. So we want to put those on the highest spots we can. And look, we've got a perfect little spot over here. It's not in power range, right? Yeah, it needs to be in power range. That's fine. Actually, didn't go that far. Pity. But look at that, we've got a beautiful little waterfall over there. All the little buildings are animated. I think it's lovely. Um, so I'm actually going to, I think, do a little bit of that everywhere, just so we can see where we're going to be able to fill up with... Um, restored water. Look at that. That's a lot of water. And we unlock the next thing, which is the calcifier. Crystallizes nearby greenery creating rock. Q, so we can then go into areas that we can't reach. And since we've got a little spot up here, We've actually got a couple of places that could potentially take some, uh... I mean, I could do both. I'm going to do both because I'm a weirdo. Spoosh. That's pretty. Yeah, look, got some bees. So we can plonk down the um, calcifier, turns nearby greenery into rock. So I'm just going to put that at the furthest spot. So then we can put one of these bad boys up over there. And then we can fill this up with water. <laughs> Okay, so we've done 57% of the greenery required, but we've got to just get to 75% to get the next unlock. Mm. 
don't necessarily need to get every single block because I know there is a way to fix that later on because I have uh, <laughs> I've watched a fair amount of this game um, before we run out of greenery I do need to place some more irrigators it's warning me that we don't have much now no I'm not going to retry. I know what I'm doing. Sort of. I think it's saying, why are you going so slow, damn it? Just enjoying the vibes, man. Is there a keyboard shortcut? I forgot to look. Oh, wait. I just saw that there is a screenshot mode. Doesn't completely hide the UI, unfortunately. to just play while not not doing anything just listening to it and enjoying it it's just relaxing my commentary might be uh, minimal <laughs> unintentionally <laughs> okay so we just unlocked the excavator Allows you to create a new riverbed, but poisons the land around on. Can be rotated. So that provides uh, some digging. Needs to be in a powered region. And you'll see that the whole thing around it becomes poisoned. So something you've got to watch out for, because uh, if we place that in previously greened areas, they get ruined. So we can look at this and we can see if we want to maybe connect up the ocean over here, or the river, I mean, with stuff. I don't think we need to at this point. Just trying to find some maximal points over here. It's good to me. Actually, should have done this. Oops. Two. Bam. One of five percent greenery, and our book has turned the page to getting the biomes going. Um, so really in the temperate environment now. And uh, reclaiming this landscape will involve wind turbines for power, toxin scrubbers to clean the soil, and water pumps to restore the rivers. The steps to creating a temperate forest are not always straightforward, and you may need to use controlled fires before the trees can thrive. Once the backbone of the ecosystem is thriving, your next step is to increase the diversity of growing plants. Introduce fainbos, wetlands and forests. You'll also need to begin to pay attention to the local climate. Um, Feinbos, if you don't know, is uh, a South African word for um, mostly the plants that grow near the Cape region, which I think is where the studio is located. And then after that, we're going to get to doing some uh, wildlife. I love these little sketches on here. Animals come after that. Good little pingy. And even an index. So now we've got into tier two. So in here we've got a hydroponium. Creates wetland. Must be built on an irrigator near water and on low ground. A beehive. Swarming bees pollinate nearby greenery, creating fainbos flowers. And when we get to 150 fainbos, uh, we'll unlock something new. So let's, let's get some wetlands. So that pops up on one of these previous things. Um, it has to be close enough to the water. 112. 
113. Actually, I just noticed that. Got unconnected river. Disgusting. Oh, I actually made it worse. <laughs> I think it was 113 just now. Let's start with this one. Beautiful. Got some wetlands. And let's see where we've got areas with trees. Uh, I think we start off with this guy over here. Perhaps get a little bit more in here. Let's go slightly completionist. There's probably an optimal placement for this. I think it's to get that larger area over there. That's a nice number. So let's plonk a beehive down here and get some fainwells. Pretty. So now we've unlocked the solar amplifier. Focus sunlight allowing for the starting of a controlled burn. Yeah. Which is what we're going to need because the next thing requires 100 ashy nutrient tiles to unlock. So unfortunately we're going to have to find some of our beautiful stuff that we create and um, burn it to the ground. Yeah. We do have to worry about the balance though because if we don't have enough capability to produce some of our, of our things um, we won't be able to finish. So like we need to make sure that we've got some trees remaining for some fain boss. What I might end up doing is, um... okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plonk this guy over here. Oh, can only be started in Fainbos who can't be put on greenery. Damn. Okay, so it has to be in Fainbos. All right, fine. We'll burn this tree and undo that. Get some Fainbos, beautiful stuff. Plonk this guy down over here. And... A lot of fire. Which is actually when nature is in balance, not the worst thing in the world. Some some plants um, have evolved to go in fire systems and uh, they only seed when they get burnt. And then they rely on the uh, the space in the canopy or, you know, whatever underbrush that they've got around them to grow larger. So it's not always a bad thing. It is a problem when, or well, like California has seen, uh, where they've been preventing so many fires that uh, gets full of uh, dried plants that would not necessarily have burnt with such ferocity had they been allowed to burn every year or whatever rate it would be. I am pulling this out of my backside because I don't know the full details, but it's something like that. And I think that's like part of what this game is aiming for is to go for some sort of um, awareness of reclaiming nature and the balance. And uh, you'll see later on there's also this sort of thing of um, doing the, the leave no trace sort of thing. Okay, so our next thing now is to use nutritious ash to create a forest. It can only be built on a burnt building husk. So you see, there was a point to all of this because now we've got some beautiful area for some forest. Some beautiful forest over there. So that's about half the forest we need. We're at about just over half the fainbos we need. So we are going to need to do another fire. Oh Lord Jesus, it's a fire. I don't want to build up, uh, burn up the entire map because we are going to need some of these trees. Unless we can place... Oh, we can actually build our famous things on these trees. Okay, so that's that's cool. It's cool. So we could actually go for burning the entire map. Maybe we go for that. Could be fun. Those are remove some buildings. Not necessarily necessary, but um, I 
fees. Oh, we've got some beautiful geese. Honk, honk. I think they're geese. Now, can we put... Okay, we can actually regrow on previously ashy tiles, so... Not necessarily the worst thing in the world. As long as this is a green number, it's uh, a net a net gain because it costs fifty. So we're making back whatever um, whatever it cost us to build this. I might regret this, but it's time to burn, baby, burn. This whole island over here is uh, gonna go up in flames. Wildfire achievement unlocked. <laughs> Oh, we actually got a tree that survived that somehow. Awesome. <laughs> this is slight crackling of uh, burning logs in the background now. Okay, we need to get 89 wetland tiles to unlock that thing, so... We can focus on that now. We've got some areas to reclaim over here. Some wetland in there. And now we have unlocked the research center. Reduces the cost of some buildings and unlocks the ability to manipulate the region's climate. So this place is basically just growing plants in a sort of a rotating aquatic hydroponic system thingamajiggybob. Okay, we still need, we're at 65% for that, 79% of that, and 48% of that. So we still need some vein boss. Okay, so now this should unlock us a massive amount of wetland over here. It only goes so far from the coast, but we've got enough wetland now. We've got 110% of that. So we're sorted on that. Um, forest and Fainboss. So Fainboss, if we plonk this guy over here, we can get a little bit on the outskirts of that over there. And now we have 110% of that as well. And uh, now it's just going to be down to growing some trees. Wink. With plant life and climate re-established, the final step is to construct an airship by recycling your buildings. As you remove your presence, introduce fauna to be the new custodians of this ecosystem. Fauna, if you don't know, is another word for animals. Fauna and flora for plants. Now that's unlocked um, a bunch of new things. We've got speed controls, I think, was that there before? I don't know. Yes, that's vehicle speed. So it's just a speed up over there. And we've got our airship, which allows for the construction uh, with the airship with materials recycled from other buildings. So we're going to recycle everything we've made and plonk them up to create an airship and go off on our merry way. Before we do that, however, I want to get a research center. We can plonk this somewhere like, like that. Now that you've learned the basics of restoration, you need to begin to address the regional climate. And that gives us some interesting climate stuff over here. So the climate is defined by these attributes right now. We are only interested in humidity, but these will change in the future. So our humidity is 46%. Um, and then we've got a whole lot of optional goals over here for reaching certain thresholds of things that will give us 
some additional things into the environment. So buildings that grow plants like the irrigator or beehive are also affected by the regional climate. So they, if they're in the ideal conditions, they will give you bonus uh, greenery perhaps? I'm not sure. I think, I think it's uh, you get your base points and then you get a bonus points for being ideal. So for the irrigator, you want to be between 30 and 70% humidity. Okay. Many buildings modify the climate si slightly, but some, like this cloud cedar, change it significantly. So the cloud cedar uses surrounding water and ocean to encourage cloud formation and increase ambient humidity. Cultivating the right climate is an important step in your reclamation journey. Good luck. Okay, so let's look at our little optional goals over here. Um, we've got to get up to 55% humidity for ferns on the riverbanks, 80% for water lilies blossoming, and 90% for salmon runs, um, greater than 70%, and we get rains. And rains are how we fix up some of our other stuff. So we're halfway there. Greater than 90%. Sure, and it's just humidity we've got to worry about, so let's look at this. Um, and maybe we want to place down our airship because uh, it's rather important. That'll do. And now you see this unlocks the next thing, which is the recycling silo. So we plonk that down and it sucks in all the, uh, the buildings nearby. I'm not sure if we want to do that in just yet. I think I want to mess with humidity. So we can plonk this guy down over here that gives plus 8% over there, plus 9% over there. Splunk. Extra humidity, we're now up to 55. And you can see all the things that this affects. So we just need to be a little bit higher and then we'll get the next thing. So we need to be greater, we're going to be needing 91% total. 2% over there, not great. No slots there. No water there. Six, five, seven. Ferns on the riverbanks. And uh, why, yes, we do. You know, that makes our, our waterfalls look too close to another cloud seed. Six, eight percent over there. It definitely likes our wetlands over there. Schwink. So one more percent and we get, well, one plus percent and we get to rains, willies and salmon runs. So we've also previously unlocked wildflowers, migratory birds, we've already seen them, and fungi in the forests. Can we see them? Yeah. Little, little mushies. mushrooms everywhere. We get our rain at least. Oof, that sound. Nothing like an African thunderstorm. As you can see, everything is currently filling up. The greenery is just soaring in. That we still need to raise our humidity. So this is when I might actually want to do a little bit of destruction before we get too happy with how things are. some water nearby some rocks that we can put some more stuff down let's see if we place this down now no, we can only get one percent down because while we do this stuff during the rains at least we have some regrowth Still only 1%. Okay. 
this way a little bit. It might fill up a little bit. Ah, we can get 3% over there. 3 plus 1 plus 1... Get three percent there now. Let's see how much humidity we can get now. 3% from there, 2% from there, 2% from there, darn. If we plonk down a calcifier, I'm not sure what the range of putting a cloud seeder is. Looks like maybe somewhere over there. So let's try a calcifier. It's a lot of rock, but four percent, five percent. Yeah, we've got wool lilies coming in. Get three percent over there. percent over there and two percent over there salmon run time we did it so that's all the optional objectives done we've got some beautiful rain we've got all the biomes so now it is time to take everything away. And the idea is we want to bring everything to our airship. So we want to start at some of our far away things. Service, we can go with that. That sucks in things over there. Ideally, we want to use as few of these things as necessary. And now that gives us a recycling drone. It travels along rivers to collect the recycled material from loading docks. So we plonk that by our airship over there. And now we can do a loading dock and we can also make a pound lock, which allows you to go up and down waterfalls. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna need to do a lock on this corner. We can just do a bunch of These guys, we might actually need to do, unfortunately, a little um, rivery thingy along that way because um, we can't actually reach that. <laughs> the water doesn't reach that far though. Oopsie daisy. We can put a water pump in there though. That looks fairly optimal to me. Here comes our little boat.
Beautiful. Off he goes. I want to be sure that we get absolutely everything in here. In ideally as few steps as possible. I think I already said that. Sorry. We can actually reach that. Beautiful. So we've just unlocked the Animal Observatory. It allows the use of a sonar ping to encourage animal species to move into a habitat that is appropriate for them. So this guy, let's put you near our airship. The final step as recycling progresses is the reintroduction of animals. New animal species will help maintain the ecosystem long after your buildings are packed away. Animal species need to be scanned for, open the scanning panel, and use the animal portraits to switch between animals and get a hint about where each species lives. Each scan will give you information about the suitability of the area. You need to find at least three animal species. This grazer lives in herds on wide open grasslands. Hmm. Wide open grasslands, that's a nice area there. Deer. Hello cuties. Bambi. This small amphibian lives in the reeds of a wetland near a famous field. How about... Bam. It's a pada. A paraki, a clean paraki. A frog, if you don't know. This large carnivore's domain is a forest which contains a beehive and is on a hill. Ooh, I don't know if any of our forest is actually on a hill. Let's see if that counts as being like right next to a hill, but I don't actually think it does. Yeah. Ooh, okay. That's actually fixable. Uh, we need to put some power in there. This is unfortunate. I would rather not have to do all this. Um, let's not go uphill. Let's put that there. Put that there. Burn that. Hopefully it doesn't spread downhill because that would be a disaster. And this... Oh, we didn't have any buildings up there. I screwed up. But actually, we've got a, a spot over there. So it's all good. It is all good. Beautiful. Let's try again. Ah, oh, it doesn't have a beehive. That's fine. Beautiful. Brown bear, where are you? Hello, cutie, Mr. Teddy. Yogi bear wants some honey. This web-footed waterfowl, mm, I swear. This web-footed waterfowl rests in a large lake, but it does not fly. A goose? Honk, honk. Cutie. This industrious rodent builds its home on a river near a forest. Let me guess. Welcome to Timberborn. It's a beaver! And finally... This predator prowls in a forest near to a source of prey. Hmm. Well, I know we don't have a forest near these guys, so what we can do is we can add another source of deer 
for, I'm assuming, a wolf in the forest over here. Timber wolf. Oh, where are you? I've got to see your face. Where are you? Where are you? Anyone see him? I mean, I know he's in the forest, but... You can just see his little face. Hello. Hello. Was that every animal? Yes, it was. Every single animal. Beautiful. 100%ing this. I still want to see that wolf. There he is. Oh, hello. He's looking at our airship and he's like, what the heck is that? Can you guys just leave? Thank you. Okay, let's um, finish this off. We're 55% recycled, six out of three animals. That looks like we can get all of those buildings there. All of those over there. The only thing I'm not sure about is... Leave no trace, fellas. Hmm? Even taking the boat, 100%. All about taking everything away. Wasteland reclaimed continue appreciate let's appreciate ah, timber wolf <coughs> wetlands Clean little Padaki and Bambi in the corner. There's our beavers. And our bear. Looking for salmon. Last area of land gets reclaimed by the rain. So this has been Terra Nil. This was the first level in their game, and I absolutely adored this. If you want to see me play more, I know I've been playing a lot of terraforming style games, but this one, I don't know, I feel a little bit of connection to this. Um, 
check it out on Steam. As I said earlier, they're saying that um, some portion of the profits on Steam will be going towards the Endangered Wildlife Fund, so that's kind of cool. Terra Nil, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!